All right, in this video, I'm going to look at finding the domain of a composition of functions. So kind of the basic idea is you're really kind of doing two domain problems at once. So what, we're, what we have to do is we've got to find the domain of the input, or I'll call it also the inside function. And a lot of times people don't do this, and it's a mistake not to do it. So we've got to make sure we do that. And then we're also going to find the domain of the new function after we do the composition. So I've made an example here. Um, f of x is going to be 1 over x. g of x is going to be 1 over x plus 2 times x minus 3. And we're going to find the composition of g of f of x. Okay, so um, I went ahead and wrote down a few things here. So again, g of f of x. Um, f of x, that's what I'm going to be calling the input function. That's the inside function. f of x is 1 over x. Well, we know one of the uh, things... Uh, that, that one of the restrictions on the domain is that we can't divide by zero. So I know that we have to exclude, well, if we think about the function 1 over x, well, we're going to have to exclude the value x equals zero. Okay? That will not be in the domain because, well, clearly you get zero in the denominator. So that's one value that I already know is out of the domain. So let's also you know, figure out our composition here, g of f of x. Well, again, f of x, that's just 1 over x, okay, so that's what I'm going to be plugging in. I'm going to be replacing all the x's in the g function with 1 over x. Well, again, we had 1 over x plus 2, and then x minus 3. That was our, you know, if we put in x's, that's g of x, but we're not plugging in x, we're plugging in 1 over x, 1 over x. Okay, and we could always simplify this down a little bit if we wanted to. Um, I'm going to kind of just leave it like it is, and I'm going to think about, you know, what's the domain? What's the domain of this, you know, of this new function now? That's something else I have to think about. So again, you know, it's 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 bad if we divide by zero. We don't want that to happen. So what I need to do is I need to solve the equation one over x plus two equals zero. I'll figure out what value, if any, you know, makes the first factor in the denominator 0, and then we'll exclude that value. And I'm also going to have to solve the equation 1 over x minus 3 equals 0. And if there's anything that uh, makes this second factor equal to 0, I'll know that I have to exclude that. Again, clearly I know that if I plug in x equals 0, um, I'll get 1 over 0, which is undefined, undefined. So we've already kind of taken care of that, though, from the first step. So um, these will be the only two things I have to think about um, now. What values, if any, would make 0 appear either in the first set of parentheses or in the second set of parentheses? All right, well, to solve this first equation, I'm just going to subtract 2 from both sides. Okay, so that'll give me 1 over x equals negative 2. So I'm just moving the uh, positive 2 over. That'll go over as a negative 2. And if you want to, you can write this as a fraction, negative 2 over 1. And what I'm going to do is just cross multiply. So if we cross multiply, we'll get 1 times 1, which is 1. We'll get x times negative 2, which is negative 2x. And well, if I divide both sides by negative 2, I'll get negative 1 half equals x. And if I, uh, so the idea is if I plug in negative 1 half into the first set of parentheses, I'm going to get a, a zero out uh, for that first, uh, that first set of parentheses. And who cares what you get in the second set of parentheses? It's going to make the whole denominator zero, and that would be bad. Okay? So I know that we have to exclude this value as well. I'll do the uh, same thing here. Um, I'll take 1 over x minus 3 equal to zero. So in this case, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So we'll get 1 over x equals positive 3. Just like before, I can write 3 as a fraction by making it 3 over 1. If we cross multiply, we'll get 1 times 1, which is 1. We'll get x times 3, which is 3x. If we divide both sides by 3, we'll be left with x equals 1 third. And again, you can check if you plug 1 third into the second set of parentheses, um, you'll be left with a, a, a 0 inside the parentheses after you do the, the uh, arithmetic. And 0 times anything is 0. So again, that would make, um, 
you know, the denominator of our composition, zero. So we also have to exclude this value. So in this case, our domain will be um, all reals except x equals 0, x equals, we said what, negative 1 half, and x equals 1 third. And if you want to write this, uh, maybe in interval notation, so 0 is out, um, negative 1 half, that's also out, positive 1 third, that's also out. And now I'm just going to describe every interval using interval notation. So it says um, we can go from negative infinity up to negative 1 half, but not including it, so I'll use parentheses. So that takes care of that first little interval of numbers. Um, the union sign, which you can also think about, uh, stands for the word or. Well then, to describe the next uh, interval of numbers, I'll have to go from negative 1 half up to 0, but again, not including it, so I'll use parentheses. Or, I'll describe the next little interval of numbers, that's from 0 up to 1 third, again, not including 1 third. Or, and then uh, we'll go from 1 third out to positive infinity. So there's our domain. Okay, so again, basic idea, uh, one more time real quick. You know, we looked at the input function which in this case was 1 over x. We said, well, you can't use x equals 0 because that gives you 0 in the denominator. Um, and then we looked at the final composition as well because, um, you know, even though, you know, certainly if you start off, there's no problem putting negative 1 half or positive 1 third into the function 1 over x, right? I mean, there's no issues there. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But the idea is once you get that new value, and then you plug it into the g function, well, it actually messes things up because then you do end up getting zero in the denominator of the new fraction. So again, look at the domain of the input function. You know, do the composition. You have to think about the input of that, or excuse me, the domain of that new function. And then um, you're just kind of throwing out all the bad values and that gives you the domain of the composition. So um, obviously another thing that's tricky is depending on the functions that you're given, you know, this composition can turn into lots of different things. You know, you may have a, a rational, um, you know, this is technically a rational equation that we're solving here. Um, and I'll do some others as well that involve radicals and uh, things of that nature. So, all right, um, I hope this makes some sense and I hope it helps you out out there.